The Mandela Effect it really is a fascinating phenomenon. Is it merely the mass misremembering of a fact or an incident from years ago? Or is something more sinister afoot? Does this represent a glitch in the human matrix? Or is it a sign that we're meddling with nature in ways that we really shouldn't be doing? Well, whatever your opinion is of this, I hope you can enjoy tonight's story over an hour long, yes indeed, for your Friday evening entertainment. Well, my dear friends, it's time to sit back and relax with your favourite drink and listen. What? What is it? Where am I? Who am I? What is this feeling? There's no light. There's no dark, no sound. Just a feeling. A consciousness. Did I die? Is this heaven? No, it can't be. I can't move. I can't breathe. This feeling. It's like I'm trapped in my own mind. And there's nothing I can do. It feels like I'm drowning. Unable to grab a grasp of air, even though my whole being calls for it. What am I? What can this be? Is anyone there? Hello? Am I even real? Well, I must be someone. I think therefore I am, right? How long have I been here for? Oh, feels like I've been here forever, and yet I'm just becoming aware of it. Wait. Memories. Flooding back to me like a wild tempest. I can remember my past self. Remember the pain, the sorrow, but also the beautiful moments. The pride and passion, the highs and the lows. I can remember riding my first bike, learning to drive, getting married, our first home. Yeah, I remember that one quite well. But... There's... Something more. Something powerful. Memory. Wow. That's a powerful feeling. <laughs> oh, her. How could I forget? It's all coming back to me. She was my everything. My being is now just filled with a formidable emotion. A protective, nurturing sensation. All I can do is think about her. My little one. My daughter, Penelope. Where is she? Oh, is she like me now? Does she even know? Oh God, she must be so afraid. But there's nothing I can do. I don't even know where or what I am now. Christ, I don't even remember if I died, but... I do remember where and when this all started. I know I'm just talking while <laughs> thinking to myself, but... If anyone can hear me in this void of reason, then listen. Listen to me now. I'll tell you how I think it happened. Maybe you can help me. Even better, you can bring me back. Maybe I'm not even dead. This is just my brain keeping me going. Somehow, though, I don't believe it. This is all too vivid, too real to be made up. One thing, though, if you can hear me, but you can't bring me back. Then just tell the little one. Tell my Penelope that I love her. And Daddy will find her. You need to find her. You need to. You must. Just listen. See for yourself. Work it out for me. And then do what you must. Whatever it takes. Oh... All started on just another normal night. What I didn't know is that this night was potentially my last. Daddy, close the window. <laughs> Little one barking her orders as always. I may have been her dad, but well, she was in charge. Yes, boss. Best not to make her angry. The temperature dropped rapidly when the sun set. The curtains in her bedroom blustering in the breeze. She was tucked in her bed, tired after another day of discovery. 
So, what do you learn today then? Before she drifts off to the land of Nod, I always wanted to know what she'd discovered. The mind of a child is like a sponge. Everything they learn and pick up develops over time and shapes their future. Little one could choose to be anything. An astronaut, a zoologist, maybe even a footballer. But judging by her duvet, she wanted to be a princess. I'm not pushy. I just want her to live life to the full, to capture every moment. Finding out what she learned, well, that made me part of the moment too. And I wanted to be in every moment. Today we learned about space, she said with a smile and abundant enthusiasm. Which is good. It's my favourite subject too. Yeah? Oh, sounds exciting. Maybe one day you can be an astronaut and go into space. Really? She replied with a shocked and surprised notion. Little one, if you tried hard enough, you could touch the very stars themselves. As I said that, little one just looked at the window, past the trees and nearby houses. She just concentrated on the millions of minute specks of light in the dark ocean that is our universe. Her imagination must have been running wild. Her smile only grew with each possibility in her mind. Then, as always, she never failed to make me laugh. I could be a princess in space. <laughs> yeah, why not? No need to kill her dreams, not yet. Let her be a princess in space, even if it is just for one night. Come on, little one. Time to shoot off to sleep. I tucked her in, and she looked so comfortable. Her eyes still fixated on the stars in the night sky. With a kiss on her head, I leave her room. Leave her to the dreams of what could be. Night, Daddy. Good night, little space princess. She laughs so gently. I close the door too, but not fully closed. She may be a bright girl, but like any other child, the darkness is one fear she's yet to conquer. Well, that's the end of my fatherly duties for another day. Now's a good time to catch up on some football. I go to the living room and slump on the couch. A beer already waiting for me, now I remember. I got it out of the fridge earlier, just before I put Penelope to bed. Nice little gift for myself. I switch the TV on, and as always, the default channel is none other than the sports station. <laughs> Fantastic. Hmm. What's this? Kickoff been delayed. Bloody hell. I wasn't known for my patience. Less so when football is involved. Oh well, not much to do. Let's see what else is on. I flick through the stations. As always, nothing but adverts. As I'm passing through each channel, the periphery of my vision is drawn to a picture frame, sitting proud next to the TV. It's of me and the little one on holiday. Both of us sunning ourselves on the beach. Bless her. She had her leg in a cast in this photo. Broke it while on holiday. I always love this picture, because, well, I just did. She showed such strong will just to continue the holiday and have a smile on her face. That picture reminded me that she's going to be okay. Such a strong character. Anyways, after being cheered up for a few moments, I went back to the monotony of changing the channel. <sighs> rubbish, rubbish, advert, rubbish, another advert, I muttered to myself. My patience is wearing thin. Ah, oh, screw it, I give up. There's nothing on. I have to revert to the one channel I hate, but it's always running. The news. I don't watch much TV, so I need to keep up to date with any events any way I can. Not exactly how I envisioned my night, but, well, here we are. Now for our top stories. The news reporter looks too enthusiastic. It's only news. Maybe another politician has been screwing around with expenses, or a dog's won a talent show. The Prime Minister has said that talks over Brexit are going well and a deal is in sight. Oh, boring. Oof. Said that a bit too loud. I listen out for movement, but looks like I got away with it. Penelope didn't hear. Always have to be careful, especially when the football's on. Also... Scientists at CERN have experienced difficulties when conducting experiments. Mm, 
Now, this is more like it. Genuinely something interesting on the news. During recent tests, the Hydron Collider, a giant magnetic tube over 16 miles in diameter, able to send atoms at 99% the speed of light, malfunctioned and caused a power outage across the city. Professor Clive Tremaine had this to say. These tests are perfectly normal, and the odd power outage is a possible outcome with each test. Sometimes the generators can overload, which causes power surges. The outages are down to our safety procedures being adhered to. I can assure the public that there is nothing to worry about. Well, if the professor said we're going to be okay, then we will be. But just before I got too confident, the news reporter had another guest on, just to make me question my own beliefs. That was Professor Clive Tremaine at CERN. But not all scientists are so sure that everything is as it seems. Andy Parsons, a radio presenter from the famous paranormal channel Coast to Coast, has his doubts. Oh, here we go, I jest to myself. Coast to Coast is famous for being rather outlandish with their claims. If CERN continues with their experiments, then eventually something will go wrong. You're not just messing with atoms. There's potential that time and space itself can be distorted, each time they smash these atoms, it creates a microscopic black hole. Now, luckily these are so small that they die almost as soon as they're formed, but well, what if? What if these black holes merged or got bigger and swallowed as whole? Or changed the very fabric of this dimension? God, those guys over at CERN are just not going to learn. They're trying to become God. Ugh. Well, that's enough of that. Remembering that the football should kick off any time now, I go to change the channel. But before I do, the phone rings. Now, I remember, this is where everything changes. I casually walk over to the phone and mutter to myself, Who could this be? It was late on a Monday. I wasn't expecting any calls. Probably one of them scammers, telling me I had an accident and wished to help me claim. Yeah, that'd be about right. I pick up the phone, almost ready to tell some stupid salesman to get lost. As I do, the lights around the house flicker. Only for a brief moment, but enough to cause me to pause what I was doing. The lights went back to normal, so I reverted to answering the phone. To my surprise, though, there was nothing. No salesman. No one. Not even a dial tone. It was like someone had cut the cord. I pressed the phone's dialer a few times to get some sort of reaction, but nothing. <laughs> Weird, I chuckled to myself, with a nervous disposition. <sighs> Bugger it, I'll look into it tomorrow. Remembering that kickoff is any time now, I thought I'd get my priorities straight. I put the phone back in its charger and went and sat back on the couch. Right, enough of this. Time for some football. Once again, to my surprise, the TV was off. I don't remember turning it off. <sighs> Could have been that power flicker, maybe. No matter. I get the controller and turn the TV on. Nothing. What the hell? I was angrier rather than surprised now. I'm missing the football. I press the controller again. Still, nothing. I check the controller's batteries, then give the controller a smack, seeing if that could help. No different to kicking a tire on an old car. Still, nothing. Oh, bloody thing. Useless piece of... I get up and try to turn the TV on from its own controls built within. I press the power button. Nothing. Not even a small glitch of static. God, what the bloody hell? I press the power button a few more times just to be sure. Nothing. Oh, that's it. Must have blown a fuse from that power surge earlier. The lights were still working though, so it couldn't have been a full power cut. Just weird how both the TV and the phone had stopped working. I wonder if next door has the same problem. My closest friend, Alex, he would know what to do. The guy could build a computer with a spoon. Well, can't leave the house with the little one on her own. Better use the mobile. 
I remember the phone being up in my room on charge. I rush up the stairs post haste. The door to the little one's room is still as I left it. Ooh, best tread carefully. Don't want to wake her up. Oh, it'll be hell on earth. I gingerly walk into my room and see my mobile sitting there on the side cabinet. I walk over to the phone, nerves starting to build. Oh, this bloody thing had better be working. I mumble to myself as I walk towards the cabinet. As I pick up the mobile and turn it on, I'm once again shocked. Nothing. I don't... What the hell is going on? My voice starting to tremble with disbelief. I'd left the mobile on charge since dinner, and that was hours ago. God, why is nothing working? I glance around the room trying to make sense of everything. I sit down on the bed, and as I do, I notice the corner of a laptop sticking out from under the frame. Right, this has to work. I bend down and pick up the laptop. I flip open the casing, press the power button, and... Nothing. This has to be a big problem. I don't believe in coincidences. The phone and TV being out, maybe. But a phone and laptop with its own power supply not working either. This has to be something big. I've got no choice. I'm going to have to wake Penelope up and take her next door with me. See if Alex is having the same trouble. With a purpose, I quickly walk out of my bedroom and storm towards the little one's room. If this is something big, then we need to stay ahead. Oh, little one, really sorry, but I... No. My voice literally shakes. The breath I exhale is chilled, and my heart feels like it's skipping beats, as I investigate an empty room. Penelope! I shout. The sound of my voice echoes throughout the house. No reply. I quickly turn back and run to the bathroom. Maybe she's using it and I just didn't see her. The door is closed. Only really closed when it's being used, so looking positive. Penelope, are you in there? I knock on the door frantically, trying to get an answer. It's unlocked. I open it slowly, but nothing. Oh, God, where is she? A bead of sweat runs down my face. Penelope! I scream her name, hoping, just yearning to hear her voice, yet still nothing. Then, something occurs to me. It's like my brain took a while to see it, to analyze it. But something was definitely wrong. I'd missed it at first, too occupied with finding Penelope. I swiftly run back to the room and check again. This time, I notice it. The bed. It was made. And the window was open. Oh no. My voice, just a whisper. She's never done anything like this before. Maybe she took my comment about reaching the stars seriously. Our garage roof is right outside her window. She could easily jump down to street level without injuring herself. I go to the window to check. Nothing. Penelope! My shout roars across the streets, no doubt heard by everyone in the surrounding neighborhood. Good, maybe they can help. After a moment, I gather myself, realizing what I have to do. Once again, I move hurriedly downstairs, my trainers waiting for me by the entrance door. I put them on, struggling to catch my brief, a mixture of exhaustion and fear. Right, keys. Don't forget your keys. I always left my keys in the same place. A small metallic box on the TV stand. I dash over to collect my keys. I kneel, legs shaking with pure adrenaline coursing through my veins. As I stand back up, I do so gradually. Giving my brain, no, my soul, enough time to take in what I've just seen. The photo by the TV. It's just me. She's not there. Penelope, she's gone. It's just me at the beach on my own. What? 
I'm barely able to speak. My whole body feels light, as if I'm about to collapse. I'm numb from head to toe. How is this even possible? What on earth can this mean? Why? How? I don't even remember this picture being taken. So many questions running through my mind. Oh, this can't be. I can't believe I'm even questioning this. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I just got confused with another picture. I stand up straight and look around just to clarify. I can see different pictures, frames of memories past, most of which still contain the image of Penelope. <sighs> I'm not going crazy. I have to say it just to make me feel sure I'm not losing my mind. No, I'm not. To confirm this, I dart back upstairs to Penelope's room. As I'm running up the stairs, evidence fills my mind. Her bed was there. Her favorite toy scattered across the room. She was there, and now she's gone. The door remained open from my previous visit, but this time, it's just wrong. I, I don't... <laughs> Unable to finish my sentence, I fall to my knees. The bed, her toys, the pictures, the wallpaper, everything that was once here is now gone. All that is left is a cot. Empty, and by the looks of it, unused. Somehow I find the strength to stand up and walk to the cot. At this point, my mind is empty. Nothing makes sense. I walk to the cot and place my hand on the cold frame. After just a few moments, I lift my hand to see the imprint left in the layers of dust. I look around the empty and barren room. Dust particles fill the space, creating a hazy, sparse fog. It's as if this room has never been used. Not for an age. God, I can't take no more. I fall to the floor, using the frame of the cot to keep me upright. Whilst I hold my head in my hands, I cry, like I've never cried before. I sit there for what feels like a lifetime. Unable to compute what I've seen, the very fabric of my reality changing in front of me. Even the smell of this sacred ground. The room just feels like, well, it just feels like death. No, no, it's not true. I struggle, but I manage to stand up, again using the frame of this cot to support me, my legs offering only the shakiest of foundations. No. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter. I'm a father. I know what I have to do. It doesn't matter to me what I see. All that matters are the feelings. That's all a man needs. I can feel it in my heart. She's out there. She's real. A part of me and nothing, nothing will stop me. I will go out and search the very heavens themselves if I have to. I will find her. Enough. <laughs> I wipe away the tears. I take another look at the cot, refusing to believe what this symbolizes. I can feel the strength building within. Maybe it was just a resurgence of adrenaline. Either way, it didn't matter. I was going to find her. Without any further setbacks, I storm out of the room and down the stairs with a purposeful stride. I'm going to find her. I'm going to find her. I keep telling myself, just to keep the adrenaline flowing. I get to the bottom of the stairs when, once again, I'm stunned by what I see. It's as if reality itself has reloaded, and it's taken time for everything to catch up. The pictures are no longer on the walls. The TV itself, just a broken mess on the floor. The living room it resembles that of a college frat house. Empty beer cans, dirty laundry. God, even the walls are starting to crumble with rising damp and flaking wallpaper. The entire house feels as though whoever lives here has given up on living. No, this can't be happening. 
I can't believe what I see. At the moment, I don't know what this is, or how it's even possible. My mind flowing with possibilities. It doesn't matter. For now, I have one purpose. To find my girl. Trainers on, keys in hand. I rush to the door and open to the clear and silent night. The living room filled with light from the full moon. It feels like this room hasn't seen the light for some time. I walk outside and the first few breaths help clear my lungs of the smell of stagnant water and dirt. The fresh air helps slow down my heart rate. I close my eyes and try to be within the moment to help myself be calm before I set off. As I open my eyes, the night sky opens itself to me. The scattered clouds disperse completely, leaving in their wake the beauty that is the Milky Way. Light after dazzling light, the stars fill my eyes like glittery grains of sand. The street itself covered with the gleaming glaze of the interstellar light show. <sighs> Princess in space. The night sky reminded me of our earlier conversation. There was something else I noticed. It was the silence, as if a vacuum itself had sucked the soul out of this world. No rustle from the trees, no commotion from the nearby town, not even the sound of air itself passing over my face. The world at this time just feels lifeless. The sensation of feeling like a man out of time soon passes. I have to start my search for Penelope. I run from the front door of my house and stand directly in the middle of the road to try and get the best vantage points of the whole street. I have no fear of being in the road. As I said, there's nothing going on. Penelope! I scream once more. The sound of my voice more than likely the only evidence of life on the entire street. I go to scream her name once more, but before I can exhale another plea, I notice a single light emerging from Alex's house. Finally, a sign that I'm not alone in this world. Like a fly to a flame, I chase this solitary beacon. Alex! Alex! I need your help! I shout ahead to warn my friend. The light to his hallway now alight. I get close to his door. Before I can knock, it swung open. A startled, half-asleep Alex is standing there, his dignity only spared by his dressing gown. What the bloody hell's going on? I can just about understand Alex. His yawn muffles his words. Alex, it's Penelope. She's missing. I can't explain everything, but... Come on, get some stuff on, and... Before I can finish my cry for help, Alex interrupts me. But what he says next, no matter what happens, will haunt me for the rest of my days. Who's Penelope? Spoken with no hesitation, whilst wiping the sleep from his eyes. Dude, it's like 10pm and I've got to work early. Who's Penelope? What, you got a new cat or something? A feeling of true dread fills my very being. My closest friend, a man I have known since I was a child, doesn't even know who my child is. Maybe, maybe it is me. No, impossible. It can't be. What are you talking about? Penelope, she's my daughter. Alex looks at me, not angry or even confused. Actually, it's a look of disappointment, as if I've failed at something, and not for the first time either. Your daughter. Oh, man. Alex pinches his nose. A mechanism of calm, perhaps. He continues to speak to me, but it's like he's talking to a patient, slowly and articulate in his pronunciations. Dude, wait here. I'm going to put some clothes on, then we can go back to yours, okay? My patience has faded. My tone quickly turns from fear to panic, and firm and clear. What? No, I won't wait here. We need to find her. 
She jumped out the window and now she's out here somewhere. Alex gestures to me to be quiet. Right, stop it. You're going to wake the missus. Alex looks back to his staircase to ensure his girlfriend hasn't stirred. Then he focuses back on me, this time with a fierce gaze. Listen, I'm not sure what's going on with you, but it's probably to do with their meds. Meds? What meds? I'm not on any. I question Alex, as I've never been one to take medication or see a doctor for that matter. Short-term memory loss, hallucinations. Yeah, possible side effects of the tablets you're on. It's strange. Even though I still don't believe him, it is a possible reason behind what I've seen. No, I was just tucking her into bed a moment ago. We spoke about the stars. We were... <laughs> she was right in her bed. It wasn't a hallucination. Dude, I'm sorry. Your daughter and your... <sighs> they didn't make it, man. A disheartened tone enters Alex's voice, as if he didn't want to remind me of something. Something dreadful. What do you mean they didn't make it? Again, I question. I have to know. I must know. With a delay, he tells me. There were complications. They both... Oh, look, man, I'm sorry, but she's gone. She's not here. What sort of complications? It's true. There were complications during birth. But she'd survived and got through it. Oh, man. I don't know you ever told me exactly what happened. Since then, you've been hiding in your house and only come to see me when you've run out of food or need to let off some steam. Alex clearly cares for me. He's trying to be as gentle with his approach to this as he can. He takes a step forward, and now Alex is outside with me. He places his hand on my shoulder as if to connect us, to help me be as calm as he is. I'm sorry, man. I really am. You've been on some pretty strong tablets recently. They're obviously messing with you. I can't begin to imagine what you're going through. I'm sorry. Look, wait here. I'm going to put some clothes on, and I'm going to be back with you. We can chat. Look, just relax. Just wait here. No! The anger builds again. I aggressively brush off Alex's hand. I'm not crazy. Alex looks at me with an element of concern and fear. Fear that I'm crazy? I'm not. I just said goodnight to her. We spoke about school. Her smile. She lit up the room, Alex. The feeling in my heart. It's not false. It's no mirage. It was there. She was there. And I'm not going to stop until I find her. With that, I run back towards the road and head back to my house. No, wait. Look, come back. Alex shouts his instructions from his doorway, but I wasn't about to listen. I'm going to find my girl. I'm not crazy. I'm not losing myself. She was there. I know it. A father's love is no deception. It's as real as the air that you breathe. Before I make the turn into my path towards my house, I step into the road. I canvas the entire area. With one last roar before I return, I cry out for my girl. Penelope! Any louder, I'm sure I would have coughed blood. But once again, nothing but silence. Dude, wait! I cry from Alex. I can see him now at the end of his front garden, just wearing a pair of shorts and trainers as he chases after me. Just calm down. You're going to be okay. Liar! Leave me alone! My voice trembles. I have to escape. He can't get hold of me. He will just tell me lies. More lies. Yes, he's out to get me. He's a liar. My mind rushing with thoughts, quickening with every moment. Alex nearly catches up to me, but with a mad dash I make it back to my front door. With a frantic panic, I manage to find the right door key. The door opens and, once again, I'm hit with the odour 
of an old, grimy house. I turn to shut the door and see Alex is just a short distance away. No, wait! A last plea from Alex, but I'm not listening anymore. I slam the door, blocking his path. The adrenaline runs thin and my energy runs low. I collapse to the floor and rest my head against the door. Almost passing out from the overwhelming last few moments, but, well, there's a repetitive bang on the door from Alex, keeping me from falling to a slumber. Mate, open the door, please. No, go away, you lie. She's her. She's always been her. Listen to me. I've known you since we was kids. I was there for you when it happened. I wouldn't lie to you, man. Never. I'm sorry it happened. Please, let me in. I just want to help. You said they were gone. I don't believe you. It's okay. I can't imagine what's going through your mind right now. Just know that I only want to help. So please, open the door. Once again, I'm overcome with emotion. The tears start to flow, and with pure anger, I hit the ground with my fist. Irrational thoughts pierce my mind. Maybe I am crazy. Maybe this is all true. Am I losing my mind? Was my brain just trying to protect me? Hallucinating? No, it can't be. I don't believe it. I can't believe it. In my heart, I know the truth. I punch the floor again. My fist pounds the unforgiving floor. The pain surges through me. Blood drips from my knuckles as the punches tear at my skin, revealing a small section of bone. Pain is so real, it brings me back. A new wave of energy hits me. I stand up, and with a fierce bellow, I let Alex know exactly how I feel. Listen here. I'm going to find her. You can either help me, or get in my way. I wait for his reply. But nothing. I take a look through the hazed glass of my front door, and can't seem to see anyone. Alex! Are you there? Still no answer. I decide to open the door to see where he's got to. As I open the door, my vision is blurred by an almighty light coming from over the horizon. It's blinding, as if the sun itself is just in front of me. I shield my eyes from the incoming illumination. My skin notices a change in the atmosphere, goosebumps beginning to grow. The air chills and turns to a bitter space. After a few blinding moments, the light dies down. I slowly relinquish my face from the protection of my hands and see the world dissolve. The sound is almost deafening, like a crash of a thousand waves against metal walls. Each wave brings a movement to the ground below. Like an earthquake caused by the sound, I step out from the protection of my house as I watch reality itself crumble in front of me. The distant hills and fields fade away and crumble like a strong breeze on a desert dune. The dust of this reality rides the wind, like a leaf stuck in a current. Is this... Oh, is this even real? I have to question myself now. There is no logical explanation as to what is going on. Maybe... Maybe I am mad. Could this all have been a fantasy created by a chemical imbalance in my mind? Rather than seeking shelter, I venture forward and stand in the middle of the road. I look to my left, then to my right, and reality is crumbling around me. The houses and apartments in the distance, now also collapsing to a fine dust. Let it happen. A wave of calm fills me. If this is all a dream, then it can't hurt me. Let it take me. Wherever I end up, well, can't be any worse than this place. I close my eyes and wait for the uncertain. The sound of the wave becomes more intense as the destruction around me leaps forward. I'm going to find you. My last words? No. A promise. 
Eyes still closed, it feels as if the devastation is at my feet, ready to take me to the next plane of existence. Wake up! A whisper sounded like it came from afar, but surely it would have been drowned out by the incoming storm of ruin. It was too quiet to hear exactly who'd said it. Wake up! There it is again this time with more clarity. Wake up. Once more, it's coming from behind me, from within the house. It could be a trick, another way for my mind to keep me in this prison. Oh, it may feel like this is a safer bet than what's on the other side. I turn back and face the incoming wave. The house is in front of me starting to deteriorate. It will be over soon. Just... Let it happen. I stay put and hold my ground. Daddy, wake up. I instantly turn to face the house. A little one? A whisper of hope. I decided early tonight to follow my heart, and I'm not going to stop now. I run back towards the house, and as I do, the road starts to collapse and fall into the blackness behind me. Each step an inch away from being sucked into the nothingness beyond. I enter the door, and once more I hear the familiar cry, the one I've been begging to hear. Please, just wake up! It's coming from upstairs, from Penelope's room. Hold on, Daddy's coming! I scream, trying to overcome the sound of destruction that lay behind me. The dust particles fill the space, the floor itself shaking to a point where the house was starting to crack. It's not long now. It will soon destroy me. I run to the steps, and with my last few pockets of energy, I stride up the stairs and enter Penelope's room. Once again, the vision of just seeing an empty cot shakes me to my very core. I look around the room, trying to see if she's there. Penelope, where are you? A desperate cry reverberates around the room. No answer. Maybe I just imagined it. Instead of seeing my life pass in front of my eyes, I just hear the one thing I need to before the end. I walk towards the cot. If this is my last action, then I want to be connected in some way to her. I fall to my knees, holding the frame to support me on my way down. Goodbye, little one. The devastation has now entered my house. I can hear the sound of my world roaring downstairs. I close my eyes and let off one more tear before the close. I'm here. The gentlest of whispers fills my mind. I quickly open my eyes to a wondrous sight. On the cot is my handprint from earlier. But next to it is another, small, gentle, like the dust hardly moved, the hand pressing down was so fine and kind. It was the little one's hand. I'm here, Penelope, I can hear you, Daddy's here. With a surge of energy, I scream to the top of my lungs. Wake up, dude. Alex? Come on, man, get up. It has to be him. Daddy, please, just get up. Little one, I'm here. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I look behind me. The sound causes me to hold my ears to try and drown out the sheer destruction. The doorframe of Penelope's room starts to crumble. It's moving forward, as if it's attacking only me. It's at my feet. This is it. It's coming to get me. Oh, wake up. Come on. Just wake up. I muttered to myself, trying to follow the instructions from the voices beyond the void. Nothing changes. I'm still here, and the destruction is nipping at my toes. I don't know what to do. Should I just let it happen? Or is there a way to wake up from this nightmare? Penelope, I love you. My last words for sure. The destruction has me. 
My legs start to dissolve and turn to dust. Numbness covers my body. No pain, no feeling, just thoughts. I turn back to the cot and smile. If this is my last memory, at least I heard her one last time. My torso is next, then my neck. The bedroom is now completely turned to black. And then, nothing. And that's how I got here. If you're still listening then, now you know. Maybe you know what happened. Maybe you can help me. But if you can't, just find her. Find my... Wake up. Wait. There it is again. So quiet I barely heard it. But it was there. Please. Just wake up. Yes. I heard it. Much clearer. Daddy. A loud scream from a scared little girl. I can hear her. Oh, the feeling of love, devotion, pride and joy. That's all I am now. Not a physical being, but a collection of emotions and thoughts placed into one entity. Dude, if you can hear me, listen. Come on, wake up. You can do it. You just have to wake up. We're all here, and we are with you, together. Alex... He's there as well. Wait, maybe that's it. Together. Combined energy. Maybe, well, maybe it was you. If you can hear me, if you've listened to my story and been a part of this, then please, help me. Help me wake up. Come on, we can do it together. Combined positive energy. That's it. Come on, say it with me. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. There's a feeling, more like a pressure, in my thoughts. It must be working, or at least something is happening. Keep going. We can do this. Wake up. Keep saying it, in your mind or out loud, however you can communicate with me. Wake up. Wake up. There. Again. I felt something. A pull of my being. As if I've fallen down a well and just glide down to the bottom. If I had a body right now, I could swear I was free-falling. This is it. Just a little more. Wake up, Daddy. There again. She's here. I can hear her more clearly now. Oh, come on. I can do this. We can do this. Wake up. Wake up. Dude, come on. Wake up. I can now feel warmth, and for the first time in a while, I can feel texture, like I'm gliding through a warm ocean. This is it. It has to be working. Daddy! It sounds as if she's right next to me. Once more, all together, we can do it. Wake up. Wake up. Wake... All of a sudden, there is light, and with an immense gasp... I take my first breath. How can something so natural feel so foreign? The peculiar feeling of being, well, me again, as a whole. I can feel my body. Each sensation brings a new feeling of wonder. My heart beating, my lungs expanding and contracting. Wherever I was, it felt like it was an eternity. For now, though, the euphoria of being back is almost overpowering. There he is. His voice, so clear and precise, has never sounded so sweet. I open my eyes to take in the surroundings. They take a while to adjust, but I can see a blurry image of a man standing over me. Come on, mate. Get up. With an element of humor, Alex gives out his command. Oh. What happened? My own voice seems... different. Maybe it's because I haven't used it for so long. Well, looks like you passed out, dude. Probably overdid it at the gym or something. I don't even remember going to the gym. My mind is hazy, and taking time to adjust to this new, 
yet familiar reality. How long was I out for? My voice is weak, my body still gathering energy. Not sure, about an hour. You were lucky you had someone smart to help you. Smart? Yeah, Penelope heard you fall, then called me, so I came over and... My mind, all of a sudden, remembering the memories of that night before. The madness. The searching. Penelope. I panted as I heard her name. Yeah, man, she's right here. Alex steps out of the way. And there she is. I see her. The most beautiful treasure I ever did see. She looks to me. As we make eye contact, an overjoyed smile appears on her face. She comes dashing over to me and hugs me whilst I'm laying on the floor. Her warm embrace, oh, it was like a shot of sheer delight. Like an electric shot straight to the heart. You okay, little one? I'm fine. Oh, good. I held her so tight, I'm surprised I didn't hurt her. You okay, man? Alex, I'm sure, could see that this cuddle with my daughter meant so much more. Yeah, this is what heaven must feel like. My eyes start to well up. If this isn't heaven, then I don't know what is. Ah, don't start with that rubbish. Come on, get up, I've got stuff to do. Penelope lets go of me and gives me the opportunity to stand up. As I slowly lift myself, the sensation of legs oh, just again takes a while to get used to. I was a little bit uneasy, but it was all coming back to me now. You're going to be okay, man. Alex's concern was heartfelt and well needed. I felt like I'd been away for several lifetimes. Not to mention that hell. No matter. I'm back now. All that matters is the here and now. Yeah, don't worry. I'll be fine. Not sure if I'll be able to sleep tonight but I'm sure I will be okay in time. Okay. Well, if you need me, just come knocking. Or get a little girl to save your ass again. Alex pokes his tongue out towards Penelope, and she does the same. <laughs> Their relationship is like that. Alex pats me on the back, then proceeds to leave my house. When he does, I take another look at my girl. The euphoric feeling is still with me. How about we watch a film? There was no way I was going to let her out of my sight any time soon. Plus, I'm still a bit shaken, so maybe watching a movie will take my mind off the recent trauma. You mean I can stay up late? She said, with a hopeful and somewhat joyful tone. Yeah, why not? It's a reward for waking me up. She quickly rushes to the couch and jumps on it, much like if it was a bouncy castle. She turns the TV on, ready for me to select a film. Can I have some water, please, Daddy? Not a bad idea. Strange thing is, I've forgotten what anything tastes like. I smile at Penelope to acknowledge her request. I take my time to walk over to the kitchen sink, still getting used to the sensation of physical movement. As I start filling a glass with water, I can hear the TV in the background. It was on the news channel. I remember now just before all this lunacy happened. This is an emergency announcement. We have confirmed reports from around the globe of members of the public experiencing bouts of nausea and causing people to fall unconscious. What the? I turn to face the TV in disbelief. We are having reports of planes falling from the sky, trains derailing and multiple car pileups from around the world. We cannot tell what is causing this or how many people have been affected, but it's likely to be in the millions with the death toll expected to rise. Some reports are coming in now where members of the public who regain consciousness have experienced hallucinations, and we're also getting reports of... Wait, yes, we are getting unconfirmed reports of people disintegrating. You heard me correctly, people are turning to dust. Oh. It wasn't a nightmare, and it wasn't just me. 
This was happening to untold millions around the world. But before I can react, the glass overfills with water, and I feel a sharp pain as the water pours over my hand. I quickly look around to check, and there I can see small droplets of blood in the sink, falling from a cut on my fist. It was real. Every moment. Wait! Alex! I scream his name and rush to the door. As I open it, I straight away look to his house, and I can see him. In the distance, I can hear the sound of screams and panic as the devastation runs amok through this reality. Alex! He turns to me, and I can see it. The start of his demise. I have witnessed the destruction on buildings, landscape and such, but not on a person, a living, breathing human being. As Alex turns to me, I can see his face, his eyes bloodshot as if vessels had burst behind the spongy tissue. He goes to shout back, but as he does, he notices his skin starting to flake and peel away. He looks down to his hands now holding them in front of him in disbelief. He looks back at me and screams, Help! I can't move. Paralyzed with fear. I don't want to watch it, but I can't help it. My body is frozen. My eyes fixated on Alex. He looks back to his hands. Each strip of skin that flakes off peels away, and the sound of it tearing is much like the sound of paper being ripped. Alex screams in pure agony. Each flake of skin blowing away in the wind reveals his unprotected muscles, tendons and tissue. He moves his hands, seeing each individual tendon contract and relax, working together with his muscles to form each individual movement. As his flesh is now exposed to the elements, droplets of blood drip to the ground. His white shirt now showing patches of red marks as his body starts to decompose. Massive clumps of skin escape his shirt through the arm and neck openings, almost seeming like they had purpose, the flakes drifting away and fading to nothing. Help! Please! Alex's cry for help is matched by a tear running down his face. Crying for help, but again, I cannot move. The tears soon turn to blood, a gust of wind brings a smell of ion to my senses. Fresh blood in the air, as if death itself was part of the elements. Alex starts to walk towards me, in a desperate manner, hands out in front. But as he takes his last step, he begins to wobble. He looks down, and a pool of blood flows from his trousers and stains the cold granite ground. He looks back at me, and with a whimper, he begs for one last act of kindness. Please, kill me. Ah. The agony intensifies. Now holding his head in his hands, Alex almost begins to shrink as his muscles start to melt and his bones crumble to dust. Now to his ankles. The screams are piercing my skull. Alex moves his head from his hands and now my mind will be forever etched with this image his face, decomposing right in front of me. I can still see his expressions, but only through muscle movement. The muscles begin to melt away from his skull, dripping down his clothes and in clumps falling to the ground. There's a sudden snap, and Alex's thigh bones crack, and now Alex has completely fallen to the ground. Laying on his back, he pushes himself up. The feeling of cold, sharp stone on his bare, exposed hands pales in comparison to the horror in front of him. Blood still pouring from his body, openings and tears in his muscles are now starting to reveal the inner workings of the human body. Alex lifts up his shirt, and in complete disbelief, starts to see his core muscles liquefy away, exposing the bodily systems that keep us alive. His digestive system is the first to be exposed. Much like pinching yourself to see if you're awake, Alex, now completely mad in agony, pushes his hand into his bowels and pulls on the intestines. 
like putty in his hands. The blood drips in between his exposed fingers. The muscles from his chest corrode and disintegrate, revealing his ribcage and the vital organs. I can see it, happening right in front of me, and yet my body still won't obey my command to move. Alex's heart is pumping with pure adrenaline. His lungs expand and shrink at a rapid rate. I can see the inner workings of his body, a sight nobody alive should see. Alex takes another look at me. His eyes begin to boil and puss. Blood bursts from the sockets, and Alex claps his back to the hard ground. Watching someone die is one thing, but seeing their system shut down one by one is another. His heart begins to slow down. His lungs relax and fail to expand once more. I watch as his heart beats its last, whereas mine feels like it's stuck in my throat. The rest of his body begins to dissolve and flutter away in the wind. Blood-soaked skin, bone and sinew, now specks of dust in the air. A gust of wind brings his remains closer to me. Eventually, a few of his flakes of skin, soaked in blood, land on my face and clothes. Again, I'm unable to move them unable to process what I have just seen. Another rush of the wind blows the skin away to the night sky. All that is left of Alex is a pool of blood. What's remaining are just bones, crumbling away. This is real. I know it is. But reality, well, the one I knew anyway, is now gone. Daddy, something's wrong. A faint whimper from inside the house. I can't bear to turn around, but I somehow managed to pull myself away from the side of Alex's bloody grave. As I turn, I see her, sitting there pointing at the TV. She's fine. Oh, thank God, I whisper, but I realize that there is no God. There can't be, not after what I have just seen. If there is, well, he's going to pay. I walk back in the house, eyes filled with a watery glaze. I now feel almost numb. I point to the TV to issue my next instruction. Turn it off, please. Oh, no. Penelope, go to your room right now. I shout so loud it made her jump out of her seat. She turns to face me, and her look is one of shock and disappointment. <laughs> but you said... Before she could finish, I quickly interrupt with a sharp command. I don't care what I said. Just go to your room and close the door. You do not come out. No matter what, you stay in your room. Clear? My eyes begin to hurt, and my voice crackles in pain. Okay. Okay. She shrugs her shoulders, then reluctantly walks up the stairs. Penelope? Yes, Daddy? I love you. More than anything in this world. You know that, right? Yeah, I know. Good night. Good night, little one. She continues to walk up the stairs. I hear her close the bedroom door. Good. I don't want her to see what happens next. Wow. Wow, what did you think of that one? Another brilliant story from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up. So you could share your stories with me, and I can read them all to you. Oh, over an hour of reading. I tell you, I'm a bit tired now. I need the weekend off. But rest assured, I will be back again with you on Monday with another story. You'll be there, won't you? Of course you will. But for now, it's time for me to bid you all sweet dreams and bye-bye.
Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay?